within normal limits, the body remains healthy. But if the feedback cannot maintain these conditions, the body enters a state of homeostatic imbalance. Okay? Moderate imbalances cause illness and disease, and of course a severe imbalance can cause death. Um, so at some level, all illnesses and diseases are linked to a homeostatic uh, imbalance. So a negative system has to go back into its normal state. So kind of the way I describe this before we even get into anatomy and physiology. Okay, so thermostat in your house. Everyone know what a thermostat is? So it's what controls the temperature in your house. I used to just take that for granted, and then sometimes people don't have a thermostat, you know, or they use the fireplace. So thermostat's what controls your house. So right now, 60 degrees. Okay, tonight it's going to get down to freezing. It's going to get down to 32 degrees. <laughs> um, so as the temperature in your house cools, what happens? Right. Your, furnace kicks your furnace kicks on. So you've got your thermostat set to, maybe you like it to be 70 degrees in your house. And so you've got your thermostat set at 70 degrees. Now when that temperature falls outside to below that, your thermostat kicks on the heater. Okay. So this falls below, which kicks on your heater. And then how long does that heater stay on for? Until it gets back to 70. This is an example of a negative feedback system. So if something in the body triggers a response, and your body's going to do something until it gets back to its normal limit. Yeah, so can somebody think of an example of a negative feedback system in the body? The abnormal temperature in the body is what? 98.6. And because my body likes to stay at 98.6, what happens is my core temperature rises and I start to um, get hot. I start to sweat. So the hypothalamus, which is a part of my brain, thalamus, senses that my temperature is, ra is um, risen greater than 98.6. So it causes my sweat glands, or my pores, you could say, to open up and secrete fluid water and salt and when that happens the it evaporates off your skin and that evaporation is what cools you so my hypothalamus has kicked on kicked in my sweat glands and i'm starting to sweat and then it starts to cool me and then when i get back up into that or back down into that 98.6 hypothalamus says she's good cuts off so then it turns off my sweat glands when I get back to 98.6. Okay, so a negative feedback system <coughs> has a stimulus, something stimulates it, change happens in the body, that change keeps happening until it gets back up to its normal limit. It needs something to stop it. It's not going to just stop on its own. They call it an external, external break. Something has to stop it in the body. The main positive feedback system in the body is going to be having a baby. Okay. There's this stretching. So I have nine months pregnant, been pregnant for nine months. My uterus, my cervix starts to stretch, <coughs> starts to dilate. This stretching of the cervix goes to my brain in my pituitary gland and it stimulates the hormone oxytocin to start getting produced. So that goes in my bloodstream. So oxytocin is now in my bloodstream. And as more, as the oxytocin, oxytocin gets into my bloodstream, that causes my uterine wall to start to contract. You start, the, the mom starts to get contractions. Okay? Those contractions signal my pituitary gland to produce oxy, more oxytocin. So it produces more oxytocin, which produces more contractions. So they work together. One happens, and then the other one happens. So we've got oxytocin causing the uterine wall to give contractions in. That contracting causes the oxyto more oxytocin to be um, secreted. And they just kind of go in this pattern, 
as in labor, right? It gets more and more and more and more and more and more. It's going to keep going. I mean, you could say, hey, I changed my mind. <laughs> uh, keep that baby in there. I'm not going to push. I'm done. No, nope, I'm fine. Not Good luck. Good luck. Cross your legs all you want. Because your body is going to keep going through this process until there's an external break. What's the external break? Yeah, the baby. The baby. When that baby comes out and the placenta com comes out, it's an external break. Turns off this whole system. And the system slows down. Contractions stop. Uh, contractions continue for a while until that uterus gets in, down to a smaller size. But eventually it's going to stop. So the baby is going to be born. Okay, so it's a positive feedback system, meaning that it needs a positive break, uh, needs something to stop it, something externally, versus a negative feedback system. Your body's set at 98.6, a current level. When your body gets back to that level, it just stops. So it doesn't need an external break or something huge to happen like in um, a birth of a baby.